All right. Um, so what we're going to do in this video is prove that the additive inverse of every vector v in the vector space capital V is unique. Um, so obviously I'm going to assume for this video that you're familiar with the idea of a, what a vector space is and I am going to make another video explaining vector spaces separately but uh, hopefully if you're learning linear algebra you've, uh, uh, you've uh, at least um, explored uh, the basics of what vector spaces are and uh, hopefully you have some familiarity with them. So um, to show that the additive inverse is unique, first we know uh, by from the vector space axioms, by the way of taking this directly from Wikipedia. So we know from the uh, vector space axioms that um, there exists an additive inverse for every element uh, V. So the, by this property, for every vector V in V, there exists an element v which we choose to call negative V, which we call the additive inverse of V, v such that uh, their sum is equal to zero. So we know that this ex element exists, but what's stopping us from say having two additive, additive inverses? So for example, if this uh, right over here was the vector space, this uh, this huge circle is pretend that this is the universe of the vector space. Um, this is the vector space V, it's a set. And suppose there is, we consider some element V in this. So we know that for every element V, there exists um, an, an additive inverse. So there is no such element V in the entire vector space which does not have an additive inverse. That's impossible. Uh, otherwise, it won't. Uh, it wouldn't be an. Uh, it wouldn't be a vector space. So we know that there exists some element V V dash such that V plus V dash is equal to zero. Uh, typically, we don't call it V dash. We call it um, negative V. So V plus negative V is equal to zero. So negative V is a single symbol, which we treat it as a single symbol at least. But what we've shown is that, or not what we've shown, or what, what defines the vector space is the existence of such an additive inverse. But, so it guarantees that there is at least one uh, additive inverse, but it doesn't say how, it doesn't directly say how many additive inverses there are. So what's stopping us from saying, considering like, you know, two uh, inverses, so let's say v dash one and v dash two, such that both v plus v dash one is zero and v plus v dash two separately is also zero. So what's stopping us from having this? Because we all we've done, all we've done, all of the definition guarantees, or all this definition of the vector space guarantees is that there exists at least one such inverse. But what's stopping us from, con, you know, considering one, two, three, or many such, you know, m additive inverses, let's just say. So, um, What's stopping us from doing that? So we are. What we're going to prove in this video is that in fact there is only one such inverse, and uh, we're going to do that by showing that if there were really, you know, let's say if there were two distinct um, such uh, inverses, then they would really be the same object, or um, not distinct. I should say if there were two really, if there really were two objects under consideration, both of which qualify as additive inverses then they really are the same object and we're going to demonstrate this. So once you've done that, once you've shown that any two objects which qualify the uh, property of being an additive inverse, the, uh, sorry, one, once you've shown that any two objects which qualify the property of being an inverse really are the same object, then we can do, the, when, then we can apply the same principle to having multiple objects. We can say, okay, we have, let's say we had three inverse, three inverse uh, objects that we were considering and then we prove that any two objects which qualify as being inverses are really the same object, then we now only have two objects under consideration because two of those objects are, the, are identical. Now we have two objects under consideration and now since they are both two objects which satisfy the criteria for being an inverse, they really are the same object as well. So now just for three, you could do this with n inverses, n potential objects which you call inverses. So let's say this was the nth object, then really you know that these two, uh, let's not call it m, let's call it three. Uh, and then dot 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 assume there are n such inverses. Um, we are going to take v2 dash and s show that since v1 dash and v2 dash are both potential, in well, they are both inverses, they really have to be the same inverse. This is what we're going to show in this proof. And then using that, we can show that uh, n such inverses would also have to be the same object. And uh, so if uh, now v1 dash and v2 dash are the same inverse, let's call it v dash. This is equal to v dash. Let me erase this actually and call this v dash. And v, v dash and v3 are both inverses, so they really must be the same inverse. Similarly, we can do this up till, for uh, all objects up till n, v dash and v n are, this, are both inverses, so they really must be the same object, same inverse. So uh, this is what we're going to prove that any two, in, if there are any two inverses, then they are the same inverse. So let's 
demonstrate that over uh, right over here. So we're going to start by supposing suppose zero and zero dash are two. Uh, first, actually, let's let's consider um, an element of the vector space. Let v in v. Suppose zero and zero dash are two additive inverses of v. That is, v plus v dash is equal to uh, sorry, v plus zero is equal to sorry. I should really say um, not zero and zero dash. This is not. Uh, this would have been the identity. Let me let me just uh, call this v v1 dash and v2 dash like we were calling in uh, the universe that I drew out in, uh, like as part of our scratch work below. So let's suppose v1 dash and v2 dash are two additive inverses. If you could really call, uh, call them my negative v1 and negative v2, but I, uh, for this problem, I would prefer to just use v dash because that looks more like a singular symbol to me than negative uh, v1, negative v. But anyway, um, so, uh, so there are two inverses. That is v plus v1 dash is also equal to zero, the additive identity, and v plus v2 dash is also equal to zero. So now this is the case. Now we will consider consider v1 dash is equal to v1 dash plus zero. v1 dash is the additive inverse of is at least one one of the uh, objects or one of the additive inverses of v. So we know that it's a vector. Um, uh, v1 dash is a vector in v. So it can be written in this form. Of, uh, we know that any vector plus zero is the same vector, uh, where zero is the zero vector. So now that we've written it as uh, v1 dash plus zero, we can write that this is further equal to v1 dash plus, well, what is zero? This is zero, uh, this thing right over here. Both v plus v1 dash and v plus v2 dash are zero. So yeah, zero can be written as v plus v2 dash from this equation right over here. So now we have v1, v1 dash is equal to v1 dash plus the quantity v plus v2 dash. We now know that addition is associative on uh, uh, like on you know, vector spaces from this property right over here. Uh, I, shouldn't, I should use a different color. Yeah, this property right over here. So now that we have that, we can rewrite this as v1 dash plus v. This is equal to v1 dash plus v plus v2 dash. Again, we will use this thing right over here to show that v1 dash plus v and also added, added, addition is commutative. So v plus v1 dash is the same as v1 dash plus v. So this is equal to v1 dash plus v, which is equal to v, sorry, which is equal to zero. And zero plus v2 dash, and you can probably see where this is going, zero plus v2 dash is again equal to v2 dash. So we've proved through a chain of equalities that v1 dash is equal to v2 dash. So if, if there were really two separate objects, or if there were really just two objects that both qualify as additive inverses, then they really do, in fact, have to be the same object. So uh, we can just end the proof here, we can formally write, Therefore, uh, the additive inverse is unique. Inverse is unique. And that is the end of the proof.